revolution doesn't happen when society adopts new tools. It happens when society adopts new behaviors. These tools have lowered the cost of doing things to the point where our desire to engage with one another is enough to get things now to happen at a very large social scale rather than just a sort of smaller family and friends scale. My name is Eric. I'm 19 and I've never been overseas. And I'm gonna be staying with couch surfers. Every face I see is completely alien to me, and I'm not used to it, I'm not really used to them. This urge that we have to socialize, to connect, to be recognized, you know, to have social status, that plays out in these technologies a lot more easily than it could in the world of, you know, broadcast media or newspapers or mass communication in the 20th century um, sense of the term. Public services are going to need to change the way in which they see people. They're going to need to find ways of tapping into people's own resources. Then they're going to need to find ways of connecting people to support one another um, in the way that sites like Netmums do. It's a message board, basically. It can be a very lonely journey, parenting. It is all about loss of the community, I think, really. So to try and get that community spirit that would have been there so much, so, so many years ago, we have to find some other way of doing it, and Mumsnet is probably the best way of doing that, I think. Mumsnet builds on what mums have always done in playgrounds, in parks, in groups, but just takes that to a whole different level. I think it's, it's a very impressive example of the way that the web can create large communities of informal knowledge and systematise that and make it very useful. And so the question you, you have to ask yourself, given how active the users are, is, is Couchsurfing a small organization because it's got seven formal employees, or is it a huge organization because it has this enormous number of collaborators? It's the same for Wikipedia, it's the same question for Flickr, it's the same question for YouTube. I'm gonna be meeting my Couchsurfing host, Alan. I've never met him before except online. He'll be hosting me for two nights. There's a lot of unknowns. The old model of social trust and anointed experts is one of only many, many patterns in which society can both um, exhibit, exhibit trust and gain value from those relationships. And we're seeing the other patterns reestablish themselves. At the moment, I'm on my way to go and meet four people who I've never met before, apart from online, um, all mum's net posters. I don't really know that much about them, apart from they've all got babies. What we're actually beginning to see is people putting their faith in a different kind of professionalism. The amount of times you read threads about health visitors or, or some healthcare professional that's given absolutely ridiculous advice. Yes. They undermine your own confidence, and I yeah. think that's what Mumsnet gives you back. Elliot's quite. People trust the mothers they meet on Mumsnet because they've been mums, not because they're health visitors or social workers or whatever. And so I think there is something about who do we trust. You don't mind me joining you? No, of course not. <laughs> this is Joshua, by the way. It's not as dangerous as you would think. I'm not too worried about what he's going to be like. There is clearly an issue of um, safety and trust. Of course it can be unsafe at the margins, and of course there are predators and charlatans. Yep. Hi, Elaine. Hi, Eric. Yeah, how's it going? What's really interesting about anything like this, any system that tries to apply rules to human behavior leaves itself open to being gamed. It's scary, not everybody can cope with it. Hello! 
Hey. Hello. I'm well. How are you? Nice to meet you. Yeah, you as well. Hello. All right. So this is your place? Yes. 94. But I think if you show trust, then what tends to happen is that you've reduced the incentive to game the system substantially. So just by being open and showing trust, you can actually protect yourself. The flat is quite small, as you could see. Uh -huh. Over there is um, restrooms. Okay. And I usually share my time with the kitchen and the couch surfer. Is this your first time in, in London, in Europe? Yeah, actually, first time in Europe, first time pretty much out of North America. What are Crazy. your first impressions so far? It's, uh, it's another world. If you want to use the phone, call someone. Um, I have Skype. Yeah. There are ways in which we can trust yeah. one another. Critically, the couch surfing site doesn't just work by turning up addresses of random strangers in remote countries. It actually has a number of mechanisms in it, as do many of these services, eBay perhaps most famously with the reputation, with the reputation market. It has a number of mechanisms. I trust sharing things with you, if you and I may share again in the future, or if we know someone in common. Um, and all of those patterns, which were previously limited by the lack of real group communication tools, have now, have now reappeared. Help yourself, enjoy the food, hope you like it. Okay, yeah, it smells amazing. In the beginning it was kind of interesting, because I, I joined and I wasn't really quite sure what I was going to find out. So I saw there was a meeting, and I said, well, let me see how the people look like. Because mm -hmm. you never know, internet, these sort of things could be a right. bunch of freaks. But getting there, sitting down, talking to them, I said, well, wonderful, they're open-minded people, they talk about travels. Um, there are so much in common that I said, wonderful, I started joining and yeah. coming to the meetings. It's just like a big group of people that most of them you know are already past some kind of some kind of barrier. Right. <laughs> Wherever you go, you can just immediately make a connection with somebody. There's more than 500,000 members, 1,500 people meeting up per night to sleep on each other's couches. Can you trust the first thing that comes up when you search on Google for a bit of information about a health condition you have? Can you trust that more than the doctor? The fact that if you have lots and lots of people collaborating and sharing information, actually the kind of the good rises to the top and uh, there's a kind of self-policing that's going on. I've seen bad advice and if there is bad advice, you can guarantee that people afterwards are going to say, no, ignore such and such a person. They don't know what they're talking about. If you've got one post that says, do this, and then you've got 25 posts afterwards saying, don't listen to them, they haven't got a clue, then you're not going to listen to them. The more people you have involved, the more people you have kind of tending to the information that, that's being shared, uh, that is a way of ensuring quality. <laughs> It's not like you get advice from one person. You'll get advice from 25, 30 people within minutes. It's like you post a thread. Now, though, I'm the one running along. Like, oh, look, I know that thread. I can post you the links. Yeah. <laughs> like, yes, you want a vaginal birth? Oh, of course you can have one. Here you go. Have a look at this. This is the reason. You would trust other mums more than you would trust, you know, the health service or, you know, government policy or, you know, best practice papers about how to bring up children and so on. And so the, the motivation to kind of network on a peer-to-peer -peer basis and help each other um, is, is quite high. And so, you know, it's a very simple economic model in terms of how you invest your time and your attention. 